Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to try and film and photograph bearded tits. I'm here at Rainham Marshes in South Essex, it's just inside Gem 25 near East London and it's one of the better sites, certainly in this area, if not the country, to see bearded tits. So I've got high hopes. I was here a few weeks ago and I did see some and got some photos but today I'd really like to get some footage of them. Bearded reedlings, or bearded tits as they're sometimes known, are not the easiest bird to see, as they spend most of their time hidden among the reeds. When I was here two weeks previously, I had no luck looking for bearded tits, probably because of the strong wind, which they don't seem to like, but at least this marsh area was enjoying it. Now Rainham is one of the more reliable sites for bearded tits, and there's a couple of good spots. There's one about 10-15 minutes that way. Um, I've already been up on the sea wall, and I've seen a few things. The first thing of interest as I approached the reserve entrance were these collared doves. Okay, not a rare sight, but these appear to be feeding on the seaweed, or something in them. Not something I've seen before. From up on the sea wall, I could see a lesser backpack gull, one of the two species often referred to as a seagull. And there was a group of seals sitting out on the Kent side of the Thames. There was a large flock of goldfinches flying around, and they landed on the seawall path. I'm not sure if they were feeding on seeds, or they were looking for grit which they swallow to help break up the seeds in their stomachs, but it's great to see so many. Like many small birds, they form these larger flocks in autumn and winter. Then, as a jogger ran through, they took off and landed in a nearby tree. And I try to record the singing of this charm of goldfinches, as a group is known. Out on the mud, there were plenty of shell duck feeding, filtering out mud snails and other marine invertebrates. Most of the waders were further round, not really in range of the camera. In the reserve itself, on the turnstile bridge, there was this male migrant hawker dragonfly patrolling and hovering, which once passers-by saw me trying to film it, brought in a small crowd. The numbers of migrant hawkers peak in late August and early September. And as you can see here, they are among the easiest to photograph and film in flight, as they tend to hover a bit more than most species. The reeds along this ditch can sometimes host bearded tits, but there was no sign of them at the bridge, so I carried on along the path. It's quite an overcast day today, but the important thing is there's not much wind, and it's a lot easier to see bearded tits when there's low wind, because in high wind they keep really low down in the reeds. The conditions are good, let's hope my luck's in and I see them. So I'm currently standing by dragonfly pools. This is one of the best spots to see bearded tits on the reserve and as I walked up here there was a little crowd and this is what greeted me. First of all it was hidden by the reeds but then there it was a male bearded tit just a couple of meters away from me. It was staying low hunting around picking at things near the ground possibly springtails or aphids. There was a female there too. Like the male it was feeding on something on the ground. They stayed low most of the time but for a few seconds, the male came up a bit higher in the reeds. This was by a long way the longest period of time I'd seen a species in one go, as they were foraging around the edge of the reeds, largely hidden for most of the time, but you could always see where they were. Fantastic to watch. There was also another male migrant hawker dragonfly here, and I got some super slow motion footage of that flying too. So, I got the bearded tits, so that's a successful trip. But I've just been told there's some hobbies further around the reserve, so I'm going to see if I can get those. I entered the shooting butts hide, but there was no sign of a hobby. There was, however, a decent sized group of little egrets having a good preen. One of them moved to the water and started hunting. There were a few mallards around too. This one was having a good wash and preen, while a cow looked on. After an hour in there, I hadn't seen any hobbies, so I walked back towards a dragonfly pool, and there were some wasps on the fence. They were scraping off some wood, which they'll turn into a type of paper to make their nest. Back at the dragonfly pool, the bearded tits were still showing on and off, and I decided to take some photos this time. 
but only the male showed well enough for a photo. And I got some in-flight shots of the migrant hawker, which just about came out in the dull light, which forced me to shoot with a slower shutter speed than I'd like. So we were just heading back to the centre and the migrant hawker was hovering nearby so we had a crack at trying to photograph it and some bearded tits appeared and I've got this footage of them. The males show quite well. There were some others about too and I managed to record them pinging at each other. And I got some more migrant dragonfly footage too, even some of it perched quite close up. Well, safe to say I've achieved my goal of filming bearded tits, but there's still plenty of the reserve to explore. I've actually only gone round, well, probably less than half of it. I'm going to head to the Perfleet hive now and see if there's anything in there that can be quite good for waders. Well, I think the tide's going down, so we'll see what happens. And then something amazing happened. Well, I was just walking back and just had the most unbelievable views of a kestrel. I knew there was a tame one about and one was spotted just flying the fence behind me down there. So I walked down to it, it dived off the fence and caught something and then flew up and landed where I couldn't see it. And I knew the high seat was there. So I slowly walked round and I saw this. She was sat on the high seat as I hoped and let me get reasonably close. I zoomed right in, got some lovely close-up footage. She was clearly looking around for her next meal. And after a minute or two, she decided to move on. I also managed to get a few nice photos as well. What a lovely encounter. Well, I've just come out of perfectly hide. A lot more productive than I thought it would be. When I first got in there, this little egret was feeding away. It was doing that classic foot waggling, where it stirs up the bottom to try and flush out some prey. Well, it's having some success catching sticklebacks. A lot of success, in fact. There was a lapwing having a wash in the distance. Before it took off. The little wiggit was doing well fishing, catching two fish in quick succession. But I kept hearing curlews calling. So I had a bit of a scan around and a on the second island back, there was a few curlews, at least two or three, apparently there was four, but I couldn't see the fourth one. Then I tried to catch them calling. Every time I pressed record, they stopped. So I waited, caught a little bit of calling. <whistles> then it stretched, had a scratch, and then some more calling. It then looked less settled, called, and then took off calling. Such a wonderful sound. I managed to grab one photo of it taken off as well. I then walked to the north of the reserve and stopped at the meadow, where there were a number of the UK's most spectacular spider, the wasp spider. This one had actually caught a wasp. They are one of the few species of spider that routinely do this as they have strong enough webs and longer legs so they can avoid getting stung. There wasn't much of interest in the Kemba at Hyde other than a few teal swimming by. And the last thing of note that day was this willow emerald damselfly. I couldn't resist a few photos too. 
I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm now walking quite swiftly because I've got to catch a bus. But I think it's fair to say that was a successful day. Bearded tits, that kestrel was amazing. Bonus wasp spiders, curlews, little egrets hunting. Can't really ask for more, can you? But I'm off now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you do, give us a like. Um, if you like wildlife and stuff, give us a subscribe. And yeah, drop in the comments if you've got any comments. So, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.